Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today I'm going to be looking at a heavily requested video called Universe Size Comparison 3D by Harry Evitt. Let's check it out. Starting with series, huh? I always forget that Callisto is about the same size as Mercury. You know, one's a planet and one's a moon. It's a shame Pluto's not on this list. I remember that was such a controversial thing when Pluto got demoted to dwarf planet. It's interesting seeing Mars being so much smaller than Earth, even though there's like, like the War of the Worlds always points out about Mars being able to successfully invade Earth. Now, I know Mars is older, so maybe they had that much of a leg up in terms of technology, the aliens, but just don't have the resources. Not sure how they would have developed enough. I wonder if humans colonize Mars, if there's ever going to be a War of the Worlds type scenario. I hope not. I hope we move past that by the time we're moving to off-world colonization. Kepler-22b, one of the super-Earths. This is very relaxing music. Interesting is Saturn's rings haven't really been there that long, at least in a planetary time scale. That's a small star. There we go. The sun's still a relatively small star, just not nearly that small as Proxima Centauri. Very colorful. I like these stars. Oh, we're getting bigger now. Arcturus. I think all these stars are relatively close to Earth. A few light years. Beetlejuice. I always pronounce it Beetlejuice. That's probably wrong. <laughs> What's interesting is all these li these larger stars, like yeah, like Vy Canis Majoris. Um, the nuclear fusion that they produce that's where you get a lot of uh, a lot of heavier elements that can cause uh, can cause fusion. I know um, there was a discussion during that the Manhattan Project. Uh, if you've seen the if you've seen the Oppenheimer movie, where they say, "Oh, well, I'm I'm almost sure it won't destroy the Earth." Um, part of it was referring to fusion of nitrogen. Couldn't happen on Earth, or even the Sun, but in these, in these large stars, assuming you could somehow get nitrogen there and place it in the core, that would be conditions, the amount of gravity, the amount of temperature, and the amount of confinement time. You can go ahead and get nitrogen if you use there, in some of, some of these bigger stars, but the smaller ones, like the Sun, nah, m mostly hydrogen and helium. It's what it's been doing and what it does. Why Scooby?
NGC 1277. It's supposed to be a black hole. Just empty. I mean, they're just black holes. Not showing an accretion disk just for the effect, but okay. <laughs> Nebulous. Helix Nebula. Now we convert it to light years. In case you're wondering, a light year is between 9 and 10 trillion kilometers. Omega Centauri. Cluster of stars. <laughs> Small cloud, 7,000 light years. Our galaxy. Relatively small galaxy, I guess. A void. I like all these empty space ones, like the black hole and just saying a void is that big. That's, uh, that's interesting. What are we getting now? The universe. What is that? 150 is less. What? I think we're just talking about the observable universe here since we don't know how big the actual universe is. Not sure what that little carrot means. Oh, well, I guess that's that. That was an interesting trip uh, from uh, Ceres to, to the universe. Hey, if you like this video, um, please join me on a journey to a clean, safe, sustainable, reliable nuclear energy future by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.